Okay, first question that I, I looked at, um, which is on, uh, on your screens now, is question 1.1.2. Okay, so it says if parents have two sons, what are the chances of them having a daughter when they have a third child? Uh, so again, that's a really, it's a trick question. Uh, they're trying to trick you by giving you statistics and saying, okay, they already have two sons and then they only have, um, so then they, they're implicating that the chances of them having a daughter is more likely than the previous times. And it's not, it's exactly the same. It's a 50-50 chance. So I've drawn a Punnett square for you just to show you again that it's a 50-50 chance. So if we take a look at dad is giving an X, Y. So dad is giving an X. And mom is giving an X over there. So then we have a girl. Over here, dad will be giving an X. Mom will be given an X. We have another girl. On this side, mom is giving an X. Dad is giving a Y. So then we have a boy and mom again can only give an X over there. Sorry about that. Let me just move it. There we go. And that gives a Y. So 50% is going to be XX and 50% is going to be XY, which means the chances are still 50%. 50-50 chance. Let me just switch this off. 50-50 chance that we are having a boy or a girl. Um, so the chances don't get slim. Just because you had six boys, um, and you want to try for a girl, chances are still 50% per 50 that you're going to have either a girl or a boy. Okay, that's the first question. Then, second question I want to go through. 1.1.5. Um, now, during the, during the paper, you will be doing at least in each paper, paper one and paper two you will have a question with regards to scientific investigations. Uh, we have to do that. They have to have a certain amount of marks that are on this level question. That's an investigative question. In paper one, that you, usually it um, ends up to be one of the human impact questions. Um, in paper two, it usually ends up to be an evolution question. The simple reason for this is, that if we take a look at the amount uh, of marks awarded for, um, for specific uh, topics, um, there's a lot of evolution questions in paper two, 44% of paper two is evolution and human evolution. And paper one, a large percentage of questions is human impact. And so that's why we, uh, they normally put the investigative questions on that. But for an investigative question, you, have to know less about the knowledge of what they are um, asking and more about the interpretation of it. So in this specific question they're asking, they're saying during an investigation, researchers measured the big size of a certain species of finch in the Galapagos Islands. So the Galapagos Islands are famous for um, where Darwin uh, did a lot of his studies. It's not the only place where he did his studies on natural selection, but a lot of it was done in the Galapagos Islands because of the specific um, a scenario that happened in the Galapagos Islands. Uh, lots of speciation occurred. Uh, animals were put in very different conditions uh, where islands were isolated, geographical isolation. Remember, geographical isolation is important. Uh, is an important topic in terms of evolution. But that's why it's always a nice example to use the finches of the Galapagos Islands. Another one that is commonly used is the tortoises on Galapagos Islands. They also tended to di diversely, um, they uh, were natu uh, naturally selected for diverse uh, terrain within the Galapagos Islands. 
Then I say to you, the type of food available before and after a drought. Now, a drought is typically what we call speciation. Uh, changes in conditions. Changes in conditions would cause a change in speciation. Like a drought could cause speciation because there's a change in environmental conditions. So the type of food available before and after a drought was a factor. So there was a change in conditions in the study of evolution and the beaks of the finches. Then they only ask you in this specific question, what factor, which factor is the dependent variable? Okay, so now you have to know what is independent and what is dependent variable. It's something you've been doing since grade eight. So you have to just know what is a dependent variable, what is an independent variable? What is a dependent variable? A dependent variable is the variable that you are measuring or you are observing. The independent variable is the variable that you are choosing to look at or controlling. So the independent variable in this case would have been my years, my time, uh, or when the drought was, before the drought, after the drought. So it normally lies on your x-axis, on your x-axis. Your dependent variable, the one that you choose to take a look at, is average beak size in this case, and it's normally on the y-axis. So the dependent variable is the beak size of the finches, C. Okay, so normally dependent we put on the y-axis is the one that you observe, I measure or measure, you measure the beak size, you observe the beak size of the finches while the independent variable is on the x-axis. In this case, it was the years. You, you decided to take a look at 1975, 76, 77, and 78, uh, or before, during, and after the drought. Okay, next question, 1.1.7. The genotype of a plant, which results from a cross between red seeds uh, that's a capital R, capital R. So that says to me that this is um, dominance, uh, capital R. There's a small R and a capital R. Um, just a moment. Um, okay. okay, sorry about that. Uh, I need some kids that are at home that need some attention as well. Okay, so the genotype of a plant Results which cross from a, a between a red seed, double R, uh, that's capital R, capital R, that means it's going to be dominant, and a plant with white seeds, small r, small r, that's recessive. Okay, is. So you need to draw yourself a quick little Punnett square and do the cross. Um, remember at the end of the year, you are not allowed to, draw, uh, to write on the question paper any longer. You're not allowed to draw, uh, write on the question paper any longer. We used to be able to do this, uh, but it's not allowed any longer. So, uh, you, but on your, okay. on your answer sheet, you are allowed to make notes. So on your answer sheet, you're allowed to make notes. So just clearly indicate these as notes. The, the normal practice that we now do is to actually draw in pencil. Uh, but clearly indicate which are notes and which are answers on your answer sheet. Um, so it's good to make notes for yourself as you do the question, just clearly in your answer sheet indicate it as notes, but you're not allowed to draw on your answer sheet, uh, on your question sheet any longer, like we used to. Okay, so if we do a quick Punnett square over here, I've already set it up for us. So one parent was capital R, capital R, other parent was small R, small R. My hostess happened, so we split it. There's capital R, capital R, small R, small R. I'm gonna place this onto the Punnett screen. There we go. That's parent one, capital R, capital R. And then Parent two, small r, and small r. OK. 
Okay, and then, sorry, my computer's slightly slow today. I think it's the internet connection, not there. Okay, so we're crossing those two over there, crossing them. And so what we find is that we are gonna have all of these are going to end up to be what we refer to as heterozygous. Heterozygous, heterozygous dominant. And it's important to know these terms. It's very important that you understand and remember what we mean by heterozygous and homozygous, what we mean by dominant and recessive. So knowing these terms are very important in terms of the interpretation of these questions. There we go. Let me just complete that and finish it up. And a capital R as well. There we go. So we find that all of the all of these are heterozygous dominant. Okay, so um, that means that if we take a look at it, be careful now. You can't choose A. A is not, not how it happens. We don't cross. That, that, that is poorly pluty. So that's not the answer. The correct answer is D. The correct answer is D. Okay, so the correct answer is D. Uh, because we are, it's, you have... Uh, allows from both and this is diploid it's not haploid you cross them already well a would be um polyploid which is not what is happening okay let's go on to the next question okay now we've come across these questions before um but uh it, it's a very it's it's a very easy mark to get, but a lot of people are making easy mistakes with it. That's why I just want to go through this question again, and especially in the way that this specific one was asked. So one point one point eight says to us, what percentage of adenine bases is present in DNA the DNA molecule of two thousand bases? So I give you a total number of bases. Uh, and 400 bases are cytosine. So firstly, I have to work out a percentage. Okay, so it's telling me adenine, 400 out of 2000 is adenine. So I have to go 400 divided by 2000 times 100. So we're gonna work that out to get the percentage because they asked about the percentage. So you mustn't, you must not confuse numbers with a percentage. So when they ask a percentage, work out the percentage, they ask the number, work out the number. That's important. So if we take uh, 400 divided by 2000, I'm just gonna quickly do it here via my cell phone. 400 divided by 2000, that gives you times 100, gives me 20%, 20%. So, important over here is to remember that 20% is to remember that adenine and thymine are of equal amounts and gu uh, guanine and cytosine are of equal amounts. 20% is adenine. So, another 20% is going to be thymine. So that's going to take 40% of the total amount of what is in the DNA. So what le is left is 60%, and that has to be split equally between guanine and cytosine. So the correct answer in this case is C, 30%. 30% is going to be guanine, 30% is going to be cytosine. Okay, so you have to work out the percentage. 
you have to consider that adenine and thymine is um, of equal amount, guanine and cytosine is of equal amount, and together all of them will make up 100% of what is in your DNA. And that's how you then work out. You are, uh, chances are you're going to get a question like that. And that's two very easy math as long as you understand how this question works. Okay, next question. Okay, so uh, our A only, B only, uh, none or A and B questions. Okay, so very important with regards to these questions again is the way that you write them. Please, if it's A only, you need to write A only. If it's B only, you need to write B only. You can't just write A and leave out the word only. Then they will not award the marks. So, let's take a look at the question. It's 1.3.2 that I want to specifically focus on because 1.3.1 and 1.3.3, was it, it's, it's knowledge questions. It's not understanding. As long as you have and you've studied, you will know 1.3.1 and 1.3.3. But there is, some inter, uh, there is some interpretation in 1.3.2 and a concept that I want to go through with you of random mating. So 1.3.2 introduces a variation of the species and I say to you the two options there is random mating and mutation. So both of these, both of these are going to lead to a variation in a species. Mutations lead to variation and random mating leads to variation. It's so the <laughs> Yes, Deborah, it's you. Um, so I, I've decided to, to elect three people to participate in this example. And it was, of course, Dickens, Kelly and Deborah. And Debbie, you are the winner in case of this random mating that is happening here. Dickens chose you to mate with and to have <laughs> babies with. <laughs> so, what, this is typical of random mating. So, Dickens was walking around the school. Mom! <laughs> and Come check here, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing this thing thing now. Routine! Don't like yesterday. Okay, so oh my word. Dickens was walking around the school. He sees Kelly, he sees Deborah, and he sees, sees Sandra. And he decides now he's going to have babies with Deborah, not with Kelly, and not with Sandra. Now, in case of humans, it's not quite as random as, as that, but, but the idea about random mating is that if this beaver was coming across these three other beavers, uh, these other be uh, beetles, then um, you, you, you could have mated with any one of those. And each of them have different genes. But he did go with Debra, and so they end up with, uh, he ends up with a specific gene. So that's random mating. He could have chose any of them, but he chose Debra. So, or he came across Debra. And so that's that's how it ended up being that the, the genes between Deborah and Dickens, not between Dickens and Kelly, and not between Dickens and Sandra. Okay, so random mating. There's various factors that influence variation in species or genetic variations within the species. So know all of them. Um, there's random fertilization. Um, there's random mating, um, so and there's mutations. So know all of the factors that can cause a meiosis, um, a random assortment and random arrangement within uh, meiosis are all things that create genetic variation within a species. 